Hello, we are back with our panel of doctors here. Hello to all of you uh, to talk about allergies. So not, not the seasonal kind, but food allergies specifically, especially given the piece that we just saw just before uh, the commercial break about how pea protein, so the kind of stuff that you'd find in chickpeas, for example, can sometimes cause very serious, adverse, uh, even anaphylactic reactions in a small subset of people. So let's introduce you to the panel. Dr. Zainab Abdurrahman is a pediatric allergist, also an assistant clinical professor at McMaster University. Dr. Lennox Huang is a pediatrician and chief medical officer at the Hospital for Sick Children. And Dr. Samir Sinha is a geriatrician and director of geriatrics at Sinai Health System and the University Health Network in Toronto. So, uh, Zena, maybe I'll start with you because I, I think a lot of people will have watched that piece and be thinking to themselves, like, my gosh, you got to be kidding me. Food allergy seems to be a problem that's, that's getting worse and worse and worse? All of the allergic diseases are increasing. We're actually seeing an increase in inflammatory disease too. Um, there seems to be a change where we're getting an increase in certain types of disease, autoimmune disease, allergic disease, asthma, all of these are increasing. With that, you know, you think, is this a new allergen? It's new to us in North America, but this um, bean is actually used a lot in Europe, so they had seen more allergy to it. So it's a new culprit, right. um, but it falls into a family. And on the, the million dollar question of, of why we are seeing an increase <laughs> in prevalence of allergies, I mean, is, is there a, a clean answer? I don't think there's a clean answer at this point. And you know, we've looked at all sorts of different things, including what we tell families and uh, young, young parents uh, what to feed their children at a very, very early stage. Now, there may be a few clues in that. There may be a few clues in just how we're keeping our environment to, over the past cleanliness, right? like couple hygiene, of decades. Cleanliness, yeah. hygiene, where they're yeah. you know, picking up every single bit of dirt and eliminating all sorts of uh, items from our environment may have an effect that's actually counterproductive. I guess over time, though, we are becoming much more allergy literate, right? Because I, so, right. so I don't mind revealing that I, I have severe food allergies, and, and mm -hmm. it was much worse when I was a kid. Uh, I was allergic to, you know, most fruits, vegetables, a lot of meats, uh, all nuts, seafood, shellfish. Mm -hmm. Like, there was a lot I couldn't eat. Um, it's, it's gotten better over time. But back then, it, it was this weird aberration, right? And it was hard to explain to people what that meant. Today, it's, it's, it's everywhere. I mean, do you, do you see that kind of knowledge reflected in ER visits? I mean, at, at sickness? No, you know, so, so uh, what we know is that across North America, the visits for some of the most severe forms of uh, food allergy presentations, so things that we would call anaphylaxis, it's up about 100% over the past uh, decade and a half. Mm -hmm. And that's not something that just pops up because people are more aware of it. That's something that's very real. So we know that the, the, the incidence, the, the number of cases of food allergy, it's going up. It's not just being aware of it. Samir, we, we often think of food allergies in particular as being an issue with, with kids. I mean, yeah. that, that's what dominates the conversation. What do we need to know about how seniors Food allergies. Yeah, a few things. Like we, we tend to pick up allergies or we tend to learn about allergies in the first three decades of life, yeah. right? And then people, and then there's some allergies where people might outlive them or out, outgrow them, if you will, over time. But one thing we have to remember is that older adults, you know, you don't necessarily lose those allergies. And even older adults can develop allergies too. Huh. And that can be because your immune system changes as you age. Um, also, just kind of, you know, different changes in your body. And we often find we underdiagnose allergies in mm -hmm. older adults. Um, um, and, uh, and sometimes we miss them um, and we don't know how to actually appropriately treat them. Are there older people who, who have gone through their entire lives being undiagnosed to something that they were allergic to all along? Is Probably. I have a lot of older adults who will have, you know, um, you know, skin reactions or other things. And, and because we're not sure kind of is this aging, is this whatever, I find that I find a lot of people who may have new symptoms and be going underdiagnosed. But the key thing is um, you know, people will be undiagnosed throughout their lifespan. Um, and it's something that we have to be vigilant at all ages because there are things we can do to improve those symptoms and, uh, and sometimes even treat them as well. well Okay, so let's talk about improving the symptoms then. One question that I think repeatedly comes up is, is to what extent we can turn the clock back on an allergy, right? And, and over the, the years, I mean, we've seen all kinds of studies about, you know, like microdosing with peanuts and, and whether that can help reverse the allergy. I mean, wh where's the science at on that? So, I mean, in terms of food allergy, the first thing would be prevention. The other things that are new that are coming out aren't curing the food allergy. We're just looking at ways to reduce the risk. 
So things right. like microdosing, people will go through um, a process. It's still considered um, experimental. It's not the standard of care at this time. But you go through a process where you'll get desensitized to a certain amount. So for peanut, maybe to eat one to two peanuts per day, you have to do this consistently. Um, Over a long period of time. Currently, there's no end date for that. You right. would continue that on a daily basis. So if you were accidentally exposed, you could tolerate up to one to two peanuts. Right. Mm -hmm. And so that's it's important, a risk right? Reduction. The, yeah, the, the goal is not to be able to eat peanuts no. like everyone else Ad if you're allergic no. to it. It's, no. it's just if, in case you, you accidentally do it. Yeah. Exactly. But what is the prevailing wisdom when it comes to introducing foods? And, and I'm talking about allergenic foods like mm -hmm. peanuts to very, very young children. So, so we used to say, we need to stage the introduction of foods in a very specific way. You know, I, when I first started training, uh, they even told us that one particular color after another particular color of vegetable and never two vegetables or fruits or, um, uh, or foods at the same time. That's all out the door now. Yeah. Uh, so in fact, we encourage earlier exposure to all sorts of foods at a very early stage. I mean, right when solids are yeah. introduced? Exactly. I mean, so four, five, yeah. six, exactly. six months just go. But, but I mean, is it just me, or have the studies kind of been rubber banding back and forth? I mean, you get whiplash if you yeah. followed every development, right? That is very true. And I understand why parents, um, other physicians, primary care physicians are frustrated. If you look at the feeding guidelines, they have taken a turn. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, it's gone a full 180. Initially, we had said, maybe we should hold back. Maybe we should not introduce these allergenic foods till you're older, till you're one, till you're four. And what they found was with the introduction of that, we actually saw an increase in food allergy. And right. so they specifically did a study looking at introductions of food early. And they did it with peanut, which everyone's very familiar with the LEAP study. But they actually did it with other foods too, called the EAT study and other health nut study, where they introduced these early and they found that there is a decrease. Samir, I, so, so I'm thinking of, you know, as, as people with or without allergies kind of go on through life. And, yeah. I, and I'm especially thinking of your earlier point about how people's immune systems change, yep. right? And so this is a very fluid situation. Yeah. What's your point of view on allergy testing? You know, you, you always have to think about allergies not just being something for children, but I think something through all ages. And so if you're having weird symptoms, you know, feel free to ask your doctor, do, do you think this could be an allergy? Mm -hmm. And can I see an allergist, for example, about them? Because then you can get tested around certain medications, but also certain food groups. And then and there, there are some therapies, especially as you get older, people start using things like antihistamines, decongestants, and, you know, for certain types of, um, you know, more seasonal seasonal allergies, and we know that maybe you can tolerate those better as a younger person, but as an older person, some of those antihistamines have been shown to increase your risk of dementia. Mm -hmm. So this is why I encourage that let's figure out what's actually underlying these symptoms, because if we can treat it appropriately um, through available treatments, then maybe we can avoid some of those other negative effects. Is there a, a, a sort of common list of, of either foods or drugs that, that people do tend to grow out of or that, that they tend to develop? I mean, you, you mentioned a few examples there. Well, I mean, there's some there's some medications, for example, uh, you know, so for common conditions like high blood pressure, yeah. you know, many older Canadians have high blood pressure and a common medication class is called an ACE inhibitor. But we know that one of the common things that we've all learned about is you might develop a cough. One in 10 people will develop a dry cough, not a life-threatening cough or anything like that. But it's one of those things where allergies and kind of allergic reactions or, or just, you know, how we react to things, again, it can evolve and it can be due to a whole bunch of different things. That's why it's always, if you're developing a new symptom and you've never had it before, again, talk to your doctor about it, point it out, and don't be afraid to say, could this be an allergy? Right. You know, just to add, oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah, go, no, go for just it. Just to interject with that, the mm -hmm. other thing about being an adult is if you have something you don't feel, you feel poorly with it, you're like, oh, really, I felt off. As an adult, you might just automatically start avoiding that food. Yes. Um, and But you need to actually sort out, is it something that is actually going to be life-threatening? Do I need to actually carry an epinephrine auto-injector? It's important to sometimes separate that. So I'm really glad you make that point because the, the be-all and end-all of any conversation about allergies is the EpiPen, mm -hmm. right? And, and That's right. Dr. Huang, you, you brought... I brought an, an EpiPen. EpiPen. <laughs> right? And so can I just say... So, uh, so I, I've used an EpiPen on myself uh, like a dozen times in my life, maybe even more than that. But the funny thing is every person I know who has one of those things but who hasn't ever had to use it yet, they're, they're terrified. Absolutely. Of the possibility. Well, you know, this is why they have trainers for this. And this is not a real EpiPen, but this is the trainer. So there's not a sharp business point to needle at this end. And uh, we encourage families, parents, 
anybody who might be in the position of giving epinephrine through, via an EpiPen to actually practice it. And you practice it over and over and over again so that when the time comes and you think you might be needing to use this to save a life, you're not going to hesitate and you're actually going to uh, deliver it. We're out of time. But <laughs> folks, thank you for that uh, an enlightening discussion as always. Thanks so much. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you.